in our scripture reading for today, you get to see some of the ways that the Old Testament laws helped order Jewish society for centuries. You get to see the way some of the Old Testament laws helped order Jewish society for centuries. One of the laws was that if a husband dies without producing children, the closest male next of kin is supposed to marry his widow and help her have children. And then, of course, raise the children. There are obvious benefits to this law. Before modern me medicine, people died all the time and very early in life. So through this Old Testament law, the, little, the widow would not be left alone. There would either be the next husband to take care of her or a child who would grow up and take care of her. And this was necessary because in the Old Testament society, there was no social security. And it was very difficult for a woman to earn a living outside of the home. They could not buy or sell property without a man, which would have made having an individual home or business difficult just to begin with. Throughout the story of Ruth, Ruth and Naomi's husbands have died, leaving the women at the edge of destitution. So Boaz, who seems to be a wealthy landowner, negotiates with a kinsman that is closer to Naomi than Boaz is, and Boaz buys the land that Naomi has inherited. And with that inheritance, Boaz also takes on all the debts that the land has. And one of the debts is to agree to marry and support Ruth in order to uphold the Old Testament law, where a brother or a close kinsman must marry the widow in order to support her and possibly produce a, a child. So, through the story of Ruth, you really get a sense of some important aspects of their society. But you can also note that in the end, this union of Boaz and Ruth produces a child. Who produces a child, and one of those children become King David. And eventually one of his offspring becomes Jacob, the husband of Mary the mother of Jesus. In the story of Ruth, Boaz is a wealthy landowner, and so he sort of has an obligation to support the functioning of the Old Testament law, which supports the functioning of the community. And more directly, Boaz fulfills his duty to the community by marrying Ruth. <clears throat> now, Boaz might have had mixed motives on this issue. Earlier in the story, it seems as if Boaz was, well, quite pleased that this younger woman chose him, even if he is wealthy. So Boaz might have wanted to fulfill his duty to the community, but he might have also been pleased for his own desires. And in the end, the generosity of Boaz becomes a blessing to the whole nation of Israel through the birth of King David, and finally, the stepfather of Jesus, the Son of God. Sometimes someone might feel like you always have to be, have to have perfectly pure motives in order to produce good. But that is not true. Many good things are produced by people who have been prompted to do good because they also know that it will partially benefit them. I think of those people who are able to donate enough money to build a whole new wing onto a hospital, and yet the addition is named in their honor. That's okay. 
There's nothing wrong with also being blessed by doing good. There are also various plaques around our congregation and in most congregations that recognize some of the gifts that individuals have given to the community. I believe there used to be plaques on the end of the pews naming the giver who donated that pew. I know people who regularly help others in the congregation. They may not get a plaque for it, but people know that they're doing that blessing for, for our other members. Sometimes they know, sometimes they don't know. My point is, my point is, Boaz cared for the community by directly caring for Ruth and Naomi. In the same way, you and I and others care for our church and the community. You give of your time and resources to bless this congregation and community, and those blessings get handed down from generation to generation. I think of the people who built this fabulous sanctuary in 1935 in the midst of the Depression. Yes, I'm sure that their names are written down in some document somewhere, but either way, their generosity remains a blessing to you and your children and your children's children. And this is not another appeal for funds for the renovation. When I'm talking about people doing things for this congregation and the community, it includes all of the little and big details that people do. Like, like that work day that Chuck organized the other week. He and a lot of people put a lot of work into that. But now we have these beautifully stained play equipment and picnic tables clean sidewalks and cleared brush and trees on the property. And every week, you not only give your offerings, but you also come to council meetings and worship committee meetings and help mow another member's grass or pick up somebody's groceries or sing in the choir or set up a PowerPoint presentation or help set up a meal for a funeral luncheon or, or any other of the many, many things that happen around this congregation that give life and joy to the congregation as a whole, but also to the people serving with each other and the community and the world side by side. Some of us can be larger donors like Boaz, but many of us can bless people in the church and community that are ways large and small, whether you're recognized or not. But all, here, here's my real point, here's my real point. All of these many, many acts of kindness and generosity create a place of blessing and wholeness to everyone around. And you, you can feel that blessing when you come through those doors, or when you come to yoga, or some evening meeting. There is a spirit here of graciousness that Jesus is handing down to this place from generation to generation by people that you know or have known and also from people that you will never know. All that love and grace are collected in this moment, right now. Every time that you give one gracious smile or remember some child's name, all of these things throughout the centuries are one thing. From Ruth to Naomi,
from Boaz to Ruth, from King David to Israel, from Joseph to Mary, from Mary to Jesus, from Jesus to you and me, and each of you and each of our children today. In the name of Jesus.